One of the fathers of chemistry is considered to be Antoine Lavoisier. He was a French nobleman around the time of the French Revolution and unfortunately met his demise at the guillotine. Wrong place in the wrong time. But before he lost his head, he kept it long enough to inform the world of law of conservation of mass. So we know as chemists that chemistry is the study of matter and its changes. Matter can have mass and mass is always conserved. So for example, if we have in general a reactant, a reactant is anything that you care to choose. Any chemical that you observe can be a reactant. But over time you look at a change, over time it can change into a product. So this is how we represent in chemistry the passage of time. Reactants become products. If the product and the reactant are the same, there is no change. Um, so your observation about the change of matter would be it doesn't change. Whatever happens, either it does or it doesn't change, but the mass is always the same. So the mass of anything before and after must always be equal. So you can treat the arrow sign as an equal sign. Whatever's on the left of the arrow must be on the right of the arrow. So for example, let's say you take a lump of copper. So let's say I take a lump of copper, a copper bar for example. I'll measure its mass today and let's say its mass is 10 grams. I put it down, I forget about it, I measure it again in a week. So a week later I've got my copper bar, I measure it again. I would expect it to weigh 10 grams. So that would be pretty um, boring, you know, there's no change in the copper. What if the copper somehow was rusting some kind of chemical change? So this would be when there's no change. There's no change in the matter, so there's no change in the mass. What if we have something like copper plus oxygen? Well, I might come back later and I find that these have formed a compound. So clearly there's a change, you know, this would be uh, an element and this is now a compound, it's chemically combined with oxygen. Well, if I had 10 grams of my copper and the oxygen would come from the air, it wouldn't be something that I would have to add, it just, you know, would be present in the air above the copper. <clears throat> I would expect this to be greater than 10 grams. Because the 10 grams of copper is now added to some mass of oxygen. The copper has pulled the oxygen out the air and it's combined the weight. So let's say, for argument's sake, let's say this is 12.5 grams. I know it has to be greater than 10 grams because I've got the weight of oxygen now. Let's say for argument's sake it's 12.5 grams and let's say I have x grams of oxygen and I ask you to solve for x. Well I would know that 10 plus x grams is 12.5 grams. Because I know mass is always conserved, I can make a, a simple algebraic formula. So 10 plus x is 12. I can then just subtract 10 from both sides. So x grams equals 12.5 minus 10 grams, which is 2.5 grams. And I begin with a conservation of mass. So 10 plus 2.5 equals 12.5.
knowledge that this is always the case is what allowed in the late 1700s chemistry to really get going. Prior to the late 1700s there wasn't really anything called chemistry. There was more witchcraft and alchemy and things unscientific. So this is one of the first observations, the fact that mass is conserved, that really laid a stable foundation to springboard the discipline of chemistry.